presidential. As the Wildcats prepare for their first primetime game, so does Ryan Field. start for Northwestern, the Wildcats continued to move the ball throughout the first half, but Duke was able to end each Wildcat drive without surrendering points. It was time for the lauded defense from a year ago to make a statement. This is picked off, Igwe Buque with the intercept. Godwin Igwe Buque read the eyes of the quarterback. Tried to get the play action. Get God when he when you gave him jump up and bite on it. He was having nothing of it. Forcing to throw with plenty of time. Shoots him up the middle. Right on target for Austin. First down, Wildcats. Keep the ball on the ball. Oh, nice. Beam to throw. Skips around in the pocket and then he's shouldered down to the deck. Always Anthony Walker and Ifadi Odenabo. Chomping at the bit on third and long. Morrison, some power under this. Leaping grab, hauled in by Flip Nagel. With both teams battling, it was Duke registering the final blow before the half and evening the score. Make up your mind to finish. That's all it is. Okay, I'm going in there right now to tell them to call the same damn place. Yeah, they're all working. Yeah, all right. Finish up three, one, two, three. Finish. Despite leading in nearly every statistical category, Northwestern entered the second half tied at seven against visiting Duke. With the Blue Devils marching on their first possession, the All-American from a year ago provided the spark to 17 unanswered points. Walker's got it. Anthony Walker takes it off the turf. Oh, when Duke's driving, you need your All-American to make a play. And Walker did just that. The Cats' offense needed just one play to seize momentum. Morrison shoots this one deep. He's got his man. 
Touchdown, Solomon Vaults. 44-yard missile. Talk about turnovers. Talk about taking a shot downfield after a turnover. And Volt's a guy they've wanted to get the ball to in space. Well, I got a human space there, Joe. Just a bomb of a pass that was all the money for Volt. With the lead and momentum, sophomore quarterback Clayton Thorson began to add to what would become a career day with 320 passing yards and three touchdowns. a physical run game, you're moving the ball through the air and suffocating defense. Plenty of passion on display from the guys in purple tonight. Nagel in motion. Third and seven. Larson on the throw. Wide open. Austin Carr on his way. Touchdown, Wildcats! A huge insurance marker, 58 yards. Thorson's touchdown to Austin Carr, who finished with six catches for 135 yards, proved to be icing on the cake for the Wildcats. Northwestern has secured the 24-13 win, defending its home turf. Impressive response by the Wildcats. Uh, finish the homestand, find a way to, to get prepared this week, and uh, you know, listen to those guys. It's great to do it in front of our students. Importantly, this happened because of the way we did what? The way we prepared. No doubt. Absolutely. And this is one win. And it's a big win. And we finished the non-conference schedule the right way. It's now time to go win the West. Okay? And that's what this is all about now. It's time to play Big Ten football. And we've learned a lot of lessons here over this first month of the season. No team has been through more than you guys have. We have battled our rear ends off. We have stuck together. Now let's raise our expectation. Find a way to go 1-0 oh next week. How does that sound? Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. So let's have some good clean. American, American fun. We were able to make some plays, you know, that we left out there uh, the last two games, which all along, you know, I knew we had it in. Um, I think we focused on this time, just, you know, just letting loose. We're giving everything we got, playing with passion, having fun again. You know, we had a lot of fun, you know, through camp, uh, off season. You know, we kind of get away from that. I think when we have fun, when we're relaxed, when we're playing our game, uh, that's when we're at our best. So, I mean, I thought we played great today. You can't get rid of the two losses, but but you head into Big Tens. Does it feel like a clean slate? We, we have to bring our A game every day now. It's the Big Ten play. It's what we came here to play. You know, we came here to play in the Big Ten, play big time football, and, and it starts right now. Our preparation and film study has to go up. It has to go up. We now have multiple games on guys. And for you guys that haven't played a Big Ten football game before, this is a little bit of a news flash. Every player is really good that goes on the field. Every coach knows how to adjust what they're doing. It really just comes down to what we do in the moment. This is a nine step process to get to the second goal. And that's to win the West Division. The cool thing about playing in a conference is everything starts back over statistically and win loss once you get to conference play. Everything starts over. Everybody in the Big Ten right now is zero and zero. So, what do you think? Later that night, the coaching staff begins its preparation for Nebraska. You hear the running back. Uh, you'd hope on this play if you had wheel the safety and the wheel. On the practice field, the Wildcats are implementing new cutting edge video technology. This new virtual reality camera puts Northwestern at the forefront of practice film analysis. Placed directly above the quarterback's head, the camera provides a 360-degree image 
from Clayton Thorson's point of view. So I come in, they've already downloaded all the film from the big long camera over the top of my head onto the computer. Put these goggles on over my face. Um, that's where I'm basically in the practice, in the play. And then the Xbox controller kind of controls the whole deal. Play, start, fast forward, rewind. And then um, I'll have some headphones usually. And I can listen to the practice as well, which is pretty cool. So it kind of gets you in that whole practice situation a second time. It's just like you're in the moment and um, it, it definitely helps getting those extra reps or reps that I didn't get, but I'm gonna see a look in the game. And so I think it's, it's huge for quarterbacks especially. Playing quarterback in the Big Ten isn't easy. The quarterback of Northwestern's defense, Anthony Walker Jr., Perfect. likes to keep his throwing arm loose before practice. Woo! Bro, my dad, like, so I had to play, like, backup quarterback one week, so I had to do, like, quarterback individual. Bro, I was tired. I was more tired than we playing linebacker. I'm over there. <laughs> I'm like, bro, all right, bro, we got to chill. As the leader of the defense, Walker brings intensity to the practice field while preparing for Nebraska. All right, let's go. Dominate. Come across the middle, Ben. Get a force hit. Come across the middle. Alert. Hey, Voss, Voss. Hey, hey, gap, gap. Hey, right, right. Hey, help, help. Pull. Pass, push, push. Let's go, Olsen. Let's go, Olsen. JB Tire, he ain't never take this amount of reps for. Let's go. Uh-huh. High school. All day. That's his high school. I'll show you some high school. Nice shot, Clay. Nice shot. Third and six. Come on, man. Money down. Let's go. Third and six. You're going to get knocked down on Saturday night. They're going to get knocked down. It really comes back to who gets up and who swings more than the other guy. This is going to be a fight, guys. This is going to be a street fight. Let's go play our game. Good morning. It's a tremendous honor to be here to represent our football family and uh, to be a part of the Northwestern family here, continuing the legacy that Randy Walker created at Northwestern. As we told you earlier, the Northwestern football coach died of a heart attack last night at the age of 52. Uh, I just put Jack down to bed and the phone rang from Jerry Brown and, and uh, said, hey, are you sitting down? And I, I'm like, yeah, JB, what's going on? And he's like, Coach Walk died. I just remember um, almost like the pit in my stomach just coming up. Just, turning and I just sat down on the bed and I, I just was speechless. That's not something that you even anticipate, you know? Obviously, you know, the day that that happened, it was a shock. Walker's impact can still be felt within team walls. His final handwritten practice plan remains on the whiteboard, untouched since 2006. The fact that they've left that on the board, the, the practice schedule, is, it's really touching to me. I don't see it very often, but when I do, it's like I always get a little choked up. Coach Walker wanted it a certain way and wanted it done this way, and it's still the roadmap. It's still the way that, uh, that he won Big Ten championships. Fitz has done a great job of, I think, maintaining a lot of the traditions, maintaining a lot of the uh, core beliefs that uh, Randy had. Obviously, Fitz has put his own spin on a lot of this as well, but. I think there's still some of the same things, uh, the, the, the trust yourself emblem that you'll see everywhere um, is still a very big part of the program and I think that's gotten even more uh, important over time. He 
sincerely embraces some of the stuff Randy did and learned from. Yeah, you know, I would prefer to much rather be, you know, roasting him as far as his longevity as our head coach right now instead of talking about his legacy. And I'd much rather be the linebacker coach, but that's not the cards we've been played. Recognized as a 2016 inductee into the Northwestern Hall of Fame, Walker's wife Tammy and son Jamie accepted on his behalf. The two of them represented the Wildcats as honorary captains against Nebraska. And I have to finish with one last quote. One you all know, it's just three words. I'm doing great. Go Cats. Beat the Cornhuskers. Primetime football from Ryan Field. It's the 20th ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers and the Northwestern Wildcats to get it started. Trailing at the half, the Cats' will would be tested for the next 30 minutes. End zone, touchdown, Nebraska, Seaton Carter. Northwestern in the outskirts of field goal range. What a grab. Oh, my. Flint Nagel holds on. Trying to set up a middle screen. It was delayed a bit, and then eventually, oh, my, blown up by Jalen Prater. The way Mick McCall's calling the plays, the Nebraska defense just seems to be back on their heels. Jackson, oh, good power. This kid's only 193 pounds, but he's running with force. After battling through four quarters, the Wildcats came up short in their Big Ten opener. So guys came in here walking, put your heads up. I want some guys to look themselves in the mirror tonight, and I want you to ask yourself, did you play your best game? And if you didn't, I want you to ask yourself then why? And when you get the answer to why, then put together and how you're going to fix it. Okay? How are you going to fix it? The same challenge for us as coaches. What worked, what didn't work, and how are we going to fix it? The number one way is to stick together. Everybody with me? Let's stick together. Let's get on the bus, go out to Iowa City, and get a win next week. All right? Make your mind up right now as you walk out of this locker room. All right, let's go. Get a break. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Beat Iowa on three. One, two, three. Beat Iowa. Hey, T. Let's go, T. There it is. <laughs> <laughs>